Hey guys, it's Christopher and this is another Solaris tutorial. Um, this chapter will be about um, creating menus. So, um, a menu is actually, it can be any kind of information displayed on the screen, but um, generally the title screen of your game is a menu, then you have the save game menu, um, and also during the game you have some menus, the pause menu, the uh, game over menu, etc. And actually in uh, in Zelda Mystery of Solaris DX, even um, the dialog box and the head-up display are menus. So um, they are menus in the sense of the Lua menu API that I will present in this tutorial. So for now in our tutorial quest so far we have we already have one menu which is this one the Solaris logo displayed at the beginning okay so this is um this script here it's a separate lua script file um that creates a menu object defines some features on it what happens when it starts, what happens when it is drawn, and um, the script returns the menu to the color. And the color is uh, the main script here. It is called, called like this. So, um, we will make an example of menu in this tutorial, and it will be the title screen of our game screen Lua. Okay, and we will make a very simple title screen with just um, some text displayed in the screen, and this text will be the the title of the game. Tutorial quest. So, as we did here, we create our menu. So. It is just a table, actually, a regular Lua table. The only thing special about, about it is that we will create some events, some functions, uh, um, like on started, on draw, on key pressed. And these functions will be called automatically by the engine when we start the menu. So you should read the documentation about menus here. Everything is explained in detail, but the main functions are sol.menu.start, sol.menu.stop, and the events on started, on draw, etc. Okay, so let's make the last instruction right now return menu. So this is a <laughs> valid menu. <laughs> you can use it already at this point, except that it does nothing. So so it will be a black screen. Um, main main script. So initially we want to show the Solaris logo, and when the Solaris logo is finished, we want not to start a game but first to um, start the title screen, show the title screen. So we execute the title screen script and then so um, require returns whatever your script returns. So here the menu It means that when the Solaris logo is finished, we want to start. Oh, Sol menu start. We want to start um, the title screen menu. Okay, and that's it. And when the title screen finishes.
Um, this is when when you want to start a game, okay? Um, so this notation here, by the way, is exactly equivalent to function solaris logo dot unfinished like this. It's the same. So do as you pre do as you prefer. So as you can see, it's the job of the main script to decide the order of the different um, menus of your game. First the Solaris logo, then the title screen, and later we will probably do the save game selection screen, and then uh, maybe an option screen or something like that, and before all of that maybe a language selection screen. So. Um, the, the goal of the menu API is to allow you to better separate um, the code. So each menu um, take care, does its own job and does not take takes care of does not take take care of um, what menu wh what was before this menu and what will be after. Okay. So, we will be able to add some menus later, like the save game screen, the language selection screen, etc. Like I was saying, without changing any code in the in the existing menus. Uh, okay, so it should already work at this point, except that we will have a black screen, so it's not very interesting. As soon as um, you do so menu start then the engine will uh, automatically call the events on your menu so on started will be called once and then on draw will be called at each cycle to um, draw whatever you want and also on key pressed will be called very useful to receive keyboard events um so let's draw like I was saying the title of our game let's create a text surface text surface create and the parameter of this is a table with all named parameters of your text object. So, mm, where is this drawable text surface? You can define uh, all of these properties. Of course, they are they are all optional. So, the font to be used. We have three fonts in our tutorial quest list. Take the one of Alone to the Past. Alignment will be center and the text itself will be tutorial quest. It's the title of our game. And um, when our menu is drawn, we want to draw the text object on the destination surface and we will draw this at 160-120 but to do this uh, the cleaner way will be to get the size of the destination surface, so the screen gets size and 
width divided by 2 same for the height and actually here horizontal alignment centered means that um, it is the center of our text object that will be drawn at the coordinate here nothing happens there was probably a syntax error attempt to index global Solaris logo menu okay so copy paste error in this file my I call my variable just menu you could call it title screen title screen menu or just menu as you prefer and by the way since Solaris 1.4 um, in the options you can on Windows sh decide to show the the console so you can see any error directly you don't have to uh, look for this file error.txt even though it still exists mm. okay it's true that it says 142 here and 141 here <laughs> But uh, anyway, tutorial quests, and um, our menu never stops. So we we need to do something. For example, we can make it stop. So after some time. So when it starts we can create a timer see the you can see the tutorial about timers if you don't know how to use them but I'm, pa I'm passing first the delay in milliseconds so 5 seconds no 2 seconds And the second parameter is is a value of type function that will be called after the, this delay. And I want to play a sound. Um, play sound. This one. And to stop the menu, so so menu stop. And when it stops, this event, no, this event is is called by the engine, so the game will start. Again, you you can put this code in this file if you prefer, but um, you will see that it's it's easier to organize to let mm, main.lua um, be responsible of the order of your menus and like this our menu is unaware of what happens next and wh what happened before so you can keep things more independent 3 seconds and it's working ok nice Um, of course, you can also get uh, keyboard events and trackpad events, but we will get keyboard events in this tutorial. On key pressed, and there's a parameter key that uh, that's a string corresponding to the name of the key that was just pressed. Um, but no matter what key was pressed we will stop the menu as soon as any key is pressed so you can copy paste this if you're lazy but I don't want to duplicate code so 
local function stop this and here the timer uh, we could you can do that Fun so you create a function that just calls stop instead of this you can just write you can just pass the stop variable like this without the parentheses of course because you don't call it you don't want to call the function at this point you want to pass it to so timer start and here we can stop we call stop as well okay so what happened I will increase the delay to have time to explain the, the problem here okay I'm pressing the spacebar and we heard the danger sound a second time because um, when I pressed the key so the first time this was called the menu was stopped so the sound was played the menu was stopped and the game was started but nothing uh, stopped this timer this timer uh, was still in progress and after the five second delay stop was called again um, because it's not because the it's not when when the menu stops that everything that you started here uh, just vanished okay it, it doesn't work like this the Lua scripts are uh, I mean we did it in, in a, this in a separate file just to keep things uh, better organized but just starting a timer in a file um, the effect of the timer continues even if even when the this menu has stopped to avoid that it's actually very easy and it's very very common problem this is why I wanted to cover it in the tutorial remember you remember maybe this first context parameter that is optional of salt timer start well this context parameter can be a menu if you want the context defined defines the lifetime of your your timer so if you do this you start a new timer on the menu okay with a delay of 5 seconds and this mean it means that uh, whenever the menu stops the timer will be silently uh, cancelled and nothing will happen after 5 seconds the timer will be destroyed spacebar ok the game starts and now the 5 seconds are finished and we did not hear the sound again so it's okay we fixed the problem so again it's a very very common problem um, with timers so don't forget to always put a first parameter to timers if you don't choose if you don't uh, specify the context parameter it will be decided it will be chosen for you um, during a game it will be the map it, when a, whenever a game is running it will be the map by default and when no game is running it will be sol.main so it will be a global timer um, this is explained here Okay, so th this kind of of, of bug um, happens happens all the time with 
when you use timers or callbacks or this kind of stuff. And there is also a context parameter on on menus. When you start a menu, you can uh, decide that your menu will be automatically stopped when, well, the context it belongs to is stopped. It can be a map, a game, or even another another menu. So you should read the documentation. It will it 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 will it explains uh, an example of each case. Um, okay, so this is a nice organization, I think. In earlier version, in early versions of um, Zelda: Mystery of Solaris DX, um, the separation between different menus was not not so clean. Mm, but now it it's nice like this, and you can have a look of Zelda: Mystery of Solaris source code. Main.lua, it's the same as what we just did actually. Recreate, we initialize uh, four menus here the Solaris logo, the language selection menu, the title screen, and the save game, save game session menu. We first show the Solaris logo, and when it finishes, we start the language selection menu. And when it finishes, we start the title screen. And when it finishes, we start a save game menu. And it's the save game menu that starts the game uh, that was selected. Okay. So I hope this w was useful. It was a tutorial mainly about Lua code, but um, menus are very, very important. You will need them. You. You can you cannot make a game without tutorial sc tutorial screen a pause menu etc. Um, I think the the dialog box is probably a menu also in this um, implementation here. Don't remember <laughs> menu. Oh, maybe not. Dialog box manager create. Yes, so menu stop. Okay, so what? Why didn't? F huh? Oh, close. Okay, oh, there is a problem with this dialog box. I click close instead of find because it was focused by default. This is a known known issue. It will be fixed. Anyway, so yes, the dialog box is a menu. Um, you you can uh, do a dialog box or a title screen without using the menu API again, but um, the, um, if you use the menu API, the engine does a lot of things for you. In particular, it automatically calls you whenever a key is pressed, and it calls you, it will call you only while the menu is active. So otherwise, it will it will be a source of potential bugs. Uh, okay, I think that's it for this episode. Feel free to ask questions if something was not clear en enough. And see you next time. Bye.